Hello and welcome to Huddersfield Town's post-match show after a nil-nil draw at a very, very cold Birmingham. Obviously, Coventry are playing at St Andrews this season. To help us go through that game, I'm joined by former Huddersfield Town writer and now athletic sport writer Richard Sutcliffe and Huddersfield Town fan and broadcaster Andy Lawson. How are you both? You okay? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, feeling Sorry. warmer than I think you are, Adam. Yeah, as you can tell uh, by the way I look, it's very, very cold. <laughs> I'd, I'd much prefer to be at home with the heating on. <laughs> Dutty, um, we, we'll start with you. Um, big chances for Huddersfield Town in this one, but but Coventry were very dogged in their fight and also carried a threat on the counter attack. Yeah, I thought the uh, I thought the result was a fair one. If I'm honest, obviously the game could have changed if uh, if Benza scores early on when he goes around the keeper, but unfortunately hit the side netting. And then after that, you know, the town had the moments, Coventry had the moments. I thought their pace on the break was a big threat, but you know, I thought Town dealt well, dealt well with that, including their pressing game as well. So I think uh, I think a draw was a fair result. Yeah, I, I suppose a big thing here, Andy, from a supporter point of view as well, is that we needed a reaction after Saturday to to go to Bournemouth and and lose five 0 You need a new face to come out in this game, and in certain elements of the performance, you could see that. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Adam. I think you you have a game like Saturday, and you've got to get something from the following game, even if it is just as we've seen tonight, a, a point from it. You've you've got to get something. You've got to see a difference from what we experienced on Saturday, and and I feel we did that. I mean, as as, as Richard said, I guess I suppose. Nil-nil probably was a fair result, but if you look at how we played, that first half in particular, we were really fluid in our motion. You could really see a threat. You could see that Coventry weren't really sure at times where all our front three were going to be, and Mbenza suddenly appears in the middle, and it's, it looks really good and really dynamic, and I was, I was really impressed by what we saw tonight, Adam. Yeah, the, there were some elements, especially in that first half, Andy, that, that you mentioned where we did look really dangerous. You, you both mentioned... Uh, that big chance that, that Isaac and Benza had. Sutty, in that situation, the movement was great. Lewis O'Brien played a fantastic ball through. Everything was great up until the finish. It was, and it, it made that fantastic pass just before for Mbenza as well, hadn't he, Lewis? I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of him. I have been ever since I saw him at Bradford, you know, in a, in a very, very poor Bradford team. And he shone, you know, you thought he was 30 years old when you're watching him in that midfield. And he's, brought, <laughs> he's brought that to the town shirt. And I've, I thought that the two best moments of the first half were down to him because those passes, yeah. you know, obviously, and Ben had the save. Uh, I think it was about three or four minutes before the one when he round, round the keeper. And it was just one of those that, you know, I know people will say, well, should he have squared it? But in the heat of the moment, if you're a forward, you go for goal and, you know, I'd say 99 times out of 100, he scores that. It's just that, unfortunately, that one moment came uh, came tonight. And like I say, the, the game could have been very, very different then because, you know, like you say, Town did play well in the first half. You know, only really had one clear-cut chance, though, which was that one. That was the save just before. But I think after, if, you know, Coventry have chased in the game, I wouldn't have fancied them, if I'm honest, because they were all about hitting the team on the break. So if Town were one up and the way Town keep the ball, I think Coventry could have had real problems. You, you mentioned it there. Obviously, Isaac chose to to go for goal as a striker's instinct. That's always what you're going to do, and you can't really blame him when he's in the confident mood that he's been in in the minute. He's been red hot form. He's he's been scoring goals and he's enjoying his football. So, in that instance, he's always going to have that instinct, isn't he, to go for goal? Oh, very much so. And you know, if he squares it and then Coventry get back and, and clear it then all hell and damnation comes down on him on Twitter, doesn't it? So <laughs> you, you have to go for goal. And like I said, most of the time he would have scored that. It was a good angle, uh, obviously running away from a little bit. But like I said, most of the time he does score that goal. But as a striker, as a forward, obviously, which is what he's playing at, as we saw him on the wing initially when he first <laughs> arrived, he has to go for goal because if a striker's squaring the ball in that sort of circumstances, then that's a guy who's got no confidence. Yeah, absolutely. And you could see that, Andy, that... On the pitch, obviously, he had a, a chance before that one. The keeper made a fantastic save. In, in the first half in particular, he was really finding good pockets of space, wasn't he, in behind that defence and being a real outlet for us to create chances. Yeah, we, we seem to have a fluidity in the first half that he 
he really benefited from because the way I, I kind of wrote the team down when I was making my notes was that uh, he was very much going to be on, on the wing and that Fraser Campbell was yeah. going to be in the middle. But the way that that first half largely seemed to be is that Fraser Campbell was was sort of coming back to be the head of the midfield at times almost, which was leaving Mbenza the the room to move to the middle. And as as Richard said, I mean, y- you look at Isaac now and you look at the confidence that he's got. I do not blame him for taking that chance. And as, as Richard says, I mean, if he'd have crossed it through to Bakuna, but it hadn't got there and then they'd have broken away on us, there would have been all hell to pay for that. So I do not blame him for taking that. And I like that element of confidence that we now have in, in him that he, he wants to take the chances. He wants to put the ball in the back of the net for us. Yeah, I, I suppose this is the, the key part where you have to, again, be, be clinical with your chances, Andy. Yeah, and... As Richard says, more often than not at the moment, he is showing to us that he would put yeah. that in the back of the net. So I, I, I don't blame him for taking it and it not happening. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I, yeah. I like the fact he's willing to do that rather than maybe in the past where every player would have been in front of goal and then would have passed it to somebody else, would have passed it to somebody else. I like the fact that we now have players who want to take the chances. Yeah, and then that, that second half, uh, there was a little bit of a lack of fluency um, we didn't really hit the, the same dynamics that we did within that first half. Sutty, why do you think that was? Do you think that was because of the, the way that Coventry came out in the second half? They were more compact. Pressing game was was better than what it was in the first half? Yeah, I think Andy was spot on as well, where he says Mbenza was finding that space which in the first half, which he possibly wasn't after half-time. Um, I don't think the midfield was quite as fluent either. I thought Hoggy had a great game. I thought, you know, yeah. the way he re- reads the game and, you know, he just intercepts his, his, you know, the first yards in his head. And you see that a lot with Hoggy. And I thought he had a really good game. I thought Carol Lighting just dropped off a little bit. I don't think we saw the best of him. Uh, yeah. Lewis Bryan, you know, well, Bryan, obviously, I'm, I'm a big fan of him. I've said that to you before. But I just don't think the midfield were quite there. And it, it was a game that was there for, for the taking. But... I would imagine that second half, Coventry probably feel the same as well. Um, obviously, they had, they had the big chance. And Edmunds Green, who again, I thought had a great game again. I think he's, he's he looks a, a real prospect and a really good player. Uh, you know, the big clearance off the line. There. I, 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 you know, I, 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 it was there to be the take. It was the three points. But I'm not overly disappointed that they got the one. Yeah, I, I was going to say, Andy, obviously Coventry were coming into this game seven games unbeaten. They've now stretched that to eight games. A point away from home in this league is always a good one, especially against the side uh, in in the form that Coventry have been in over the last couple of months. Yeah, I think going into this little run of fixtures just before Christmas, people were looking at the game against Bournemouth. This is going back a couple of months. People were looking at Bournemouth, they were looking at Coventry, then they were looking at Watford uh, next mm-hmm. weekend. And I think everybody was kind of looking, no disrespect to Coventry, but people were looking at the Coventry game and going, right, well, we would yeah, definitely look at that one for, for points. We know what happened on Saturday, so let's not kind of dwell on that too much. But to come into today and actually get a point from, like you say, Adam, a form team in the Championship, a team who it's now eight games unbeaten. I think to go to their home, possibly in this particular case with them ground sharing with Birmingham, not necessarily the right word, but you know what I mean, where, where they're most comfortable, their home territory in this season, to go there to get the point. You've, you've got to be happy with that. And it does set us up nicely for the game this weekend, I'd say, where hopefully we can see uh, more from Isaac, more from Carol Lighting. And again, as, as Richard said, um, Jonathan Hogg, he brought that element of stability in front of the defence. So to see him back, that's good. And that just helps us to build toward the weekend's game. Yeah, just before we took on, uh, touch on the, the defensive elements and another clean sheet, um, Carlos said post-match he felt his side didn't use the switch enough. Obviously, we know this season that our main outlets and, and good attacking moments have come from those wide areas with Harry Toffolo and Pippa. And Pippa again had, had another good game today. It's just that case, isn't it, of being a little bit more fluid, especially in that midfield, hitting the Diags a lot sooner because that's how you ultimately break down a side like Coventry who, who are sat deep and looking to play on the counter city. Yeah, it is. And I, th- I think he's got a point now. I think there was one marvellous crossfield ball from Nabi Sar. I don't know, probably about 65, 70 minutes. And that's they need a little bit more of that. You know, switch the play as quick as he did. And that was a fantastic ball out to the right wing there. And they needed a little bit more of that. And whereas, like I say, the midfield didn't really move 
the ball as fast as I thought they could have done. Um, but you know, it's, it's it's like you say, it's, it's three clean sheets now in four. You know, obviously we all know what happened on Saturday, and there was yeah. I did look at that team. There was an element I think. Well, Coventry is being prioritised. Maybe um, you know, you never really know that when you're a layman outside, you know, the, how a footballers uh, feel. But I looked at that and thought, well, yeah, the focus is going to be on Coventry. And uh, I think, like Andy said, you had to get something from tonight. They have done and move on again for, you know, these games come kicking fast, don't they? And a very tough one on uh, on the weekend. Well, 100%. And you, you said it there, City, three clean sheets in, in the last four games. And you, you've both touched upon Hoggy, but he just adds that extra little bit of stability, doesn't he, in front of that back line. He, he marshals them really well. He's always the kind of first line of, of defence if anyone breaks through O'Brien and, and Iting. Yeah, yeah, I'd I imagine don't... I'd imagine they... Uh, sorry, I, I wasn't sure which one there. I, I'd imagine <laughs> they love playing with him, you know, because he is that safety net. He's, uh, you know, he's, and his he's anticipation. And, and the, the guys behind him as well, they know they can trust him. You know, he's a yeah. big player and, uh, you know, sometimes he uh, old man's the opposition in terms of getting a foul as well. He, you know, he gets a nice... Uh, he goes over, he gets a little nudge and it's just a nice little calm everything down and we move forward. You, you must lo love watching him play, Andy. Oh, yeah. Uh, as soon as uh, he was on the pitch tonight and I was watching him, there was a certain song that the town fans sing that I'm not necessarily <laughs> going to bring to the airways here, but that was just yeah, coming to my it. mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was just what was coming to my mind. And, and yeah, we previously when I've, when I've been on with you, Adam, as we've reviewed, I think it was the Millwall game I was talking about was you can tell that the defence has confidence in those around them. Now, we're talking about Hoggy at this point, so they, they know that they've got that man there who is going to protect them. But also, in the case of maybe Naby Sar, if he wants to go forward a bit, Hoggy's going to drop back. He's got the cover there. They, they have that element of confidence that he is going to sort out any problems. And also, it's worth pointing out that I think the fact they've got keepers that they trust, be that Ben Hamer, who unfortunately obviously went out on, on Saturday, or as the case tonight being Ryan Schofield, who I, I think has, has come into the town side and doesn't look like a, a youngster. He looks like somebody who has been playing in the blue and white stripes for the first team for, for a very long time. So I think that there's that confidence there around the defence that helps them to just feel more settled in, in everything that they're doing. He was so calm on the ball, wasn't he, Ryan? He looked well above his age. Yeah, he's he's really impressed me with anything that he's been asked to do. He's done it. I mean, tonight we saw a bit of fancy footwork um, as he's uh, got a Coventry player running toward him and, um, yeah, just kind of jinx it past it or, or what have you. And yeah, he, he to me, looks like... Um, looks like a, a really good keeper part of of a really exciting youth system that we've got and that we're now under Carlos oh, starting to see come through to the first team yeah everyone knows and, and it's been well documented that, that Ryan's highly highly rated here at the, at the football club obviously that's his that was his third start this season in his second clean sheet albeit he didn't have much to do but equally when he was building from the back and he did what he had to do and, and that's always a good sign of a, of a good keeper so it's it is, it is, definitely. And I think the way Town are doing it with him as well, they're easing him in. And that's the great thing with having Ben Hamer because you've got, you know, the experienced guy who, you know, they, they obviously the only time that uh, Ryan's getting in at the moment is when an injury's come along, which is always unfortunate. But I think that's a great thing that Ryan's coming in and he's learning as he goes along. Yeah, I had a couple of uh, palpitations early on with how deep, <laughs> how deep he was taking the ball in the six-yard box, I must admit, because that looks... Admittedly, only on television, but it looked a bit bobbly. Did the pitch, and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh, don't take your swinging kick at this with you know when you're two yards from goal. Because I always think back to the uh, Birmingham derby on that one when it, I think it was against Aston Villa, and uh, the ball went over the keeper's foot about yeah. 20 years ago and straight into the net. So that gave me a little bit of un, uh, palpitations early on. But no, I thought he had uh, just looks just looks a, a wise old head on young shoulders, and and that's only going to improve the more games that he plays as well but there's always that backup or fail safe that you know Ben Hamer can come back in and, and Ryan can keep his education going while he's working not only working with him during the week but you know how he handles himself during matches uh, and another of those wise young heads is Ramani Edmonds-Green we, we mentioned him earlier but 
produced a goal-saving clearance at the end, albeit Andy with a, a little bit of luck with it as well. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I was watching that. That was a real heart in mouth moment. I've I've got to be honest with you, Adam, and say, I thought initially I was like, oh, no, right, it's in, it's in. We've just got to yeah. get our get our heads around this. And I think then we were suddenly, all like that. yeah, then suddenly there's Romani Edmonds Green, and he's uh, digging it out. I think there was a bit of post help as well, and um, yeah, he um, he is he's, he's this this wise head on on young shoulders. This this is part of. What really does excite me about town now is he's a, a name that we're seeing. We, we've talked about Ryan as well. We obviously Lewis O'Brien come through maybe a, a season or two before some of the names that we're mentioning. But there's a lot of excitement there from from my perspective of of those coming through uh, from from the youth system. And you you just see that in a moment like tonight, where Romani Edmonds Green had to make that decision that got him into the right place to make that clearance and he, he he's there and he, he does it and looks very much like he's he's a big part of the side even though he's what two or three games now into his kind of first yeah. team career for town so yeah brilliant you're a fan of his as well city aren't you yeah very much so and you know because you look in the championship if you took out of most championship teams if you took Stearman, Elphick and Schindler out of that <laughs> Then that that team that that team that squad would be in trouble, but that it isn't, you know that that and that and that's because of you know how and obviously there's Critchlow as well who who can, yeah. who can do the job. It's there's a really exciting young core to build around for me, and I always say with every manager and certainly a manager who's trying to change the culture like Carlos Carlos is doing and doing a very good job while he's doing it. It takes I would say three transfer windows because that means basically eighteen months to build what you're doing. And I think that is so exciting at the moment. Obviously, we're one transfer window into that. But these young lads are, are doing the job and coming through. And, you know, the sign, signing of people and something like that, it just shows that, you know, another young lad, that there's, there's something really exciting could be building here. And, uh, and, and you know, and that's obviously fantastic to see after what we had in the last couple of years. Yeah, 100%. And, and in that... Second half, albeit there weren't many chances, um, the the keeper uh, made a fantastic save, uh, didn't he? To to deny Alex Pritchard near the end, Andy. Yeah, yeah, he did. We, um, I'll be honest, Adam, I was writing notes all the way through the game. Well, I say all the way through the game. First half, plenty of notes. Second half, I didn't make a note until the 81st minute, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which was a case of the uh, the clearance up the line. Then on the 82nd minute, yeah, Alex Pritchard really working their keeper. And uh, it was it was good to see him back on the pitch. He took a, a couple of kind of heavy challenges. As both of them like, ah, no. But luckily, uh, everything seems all right. And uh, yeah, I thought he he worked the keeper well, and he did what was was needed of him when the the ball was in his area. The key thing in this league, oh, yeah. City, isn't it, is to to take points away from home and and win your home games in Huddersfield Town so far, or recent form at least at the John Smith Stadium have been very good, which is a case for a bit of optimism, isn't it, going into Saturday's game, albeit against a Watford side that, that are very good. Oh, very much so, very much so. And, and let's not forget how relentless this schedule is as well. You know, by this, and, you know, after people look at it, so nil nil at Coventry, we should have won that. But you think, well, no, you're picking points if you go along because it's such a division where in two weeks, two and a half weeks, you play five matches. So if you have a bad run at any stage, that can do some real damage. So you've just got to keep accumulating. And like I say, the home form has been fantastic lately. And the performances as well. It's not just the uh, the results. And it's so exciting to go into. And I think, you know, I look at the Barnsley as well, the game over Christmas, because they're flying at the moment. There's two really tough, but games that I think town should be excited about because, you know, they're in good shape. Obviously, I know the injuries there and it is stretching resources. But... I feel there's, you know, things are really building nicely, and you know, I really fancy him for a start on Saturday. I really do. I think they could, uh, I think they could shot Watford. Fingers crossed. You're, you're correct, City. Uh, thank you both for for joining us and for helping us analyse Huddersfield Town's nil-nil draw at Coventry. Uh, thank you for watching. <laughs>